Welcome back to the channel. This week we will be repairing a Tesla Model 3 with structural damage to the rear body. This repair will be completed on the select frame bench using dedicated jigs. The vehicle will be repaired in multiple videos highlighting all the steps of the collision repair process, so make sure to hit that subscribe button in the upper right hand corner so you don't miss the continuation videos. A belt sander with a Scotch-Brite belt is being used to clean off all of the seam sealer to identify the spot welds that will need to be grinded and drilled out. The spot welds attaching the end panel to the frame rails and rear floor are removed with a belt sander with an 80 grit belt. The spot welds attaching the lower quarter extension to the end panel are drilled out as the quarter extension overlaps the end panel. The lower spot weld is grinded off from the back side. The self-piercing rivets attaching the taillight pockets to the end panel are grinded off from the backside. The end panel is now warmed up to help release the structural glue and a seam buster with a hammer is used to help separate the end panel from the vehicle. With the end panel removed from the vehicle, we will now start grinding all the spot welds attaching the floor to the vehicle structure. A hacksaw is used to cut the majority of the floor out. This will make it easier to separate the floor flanges from the top of the rear rails, which will be done by warming up the structural glue and separating with a seam buster. Time to start removing the rear frame rail end plate. These rail pieces are a lot thicker than the end panel and the floor. A belt sander with 80 grit is used to grind off all the spot weld. Heat is now applied to the area to help release the structural glue. A seam buster and hammer is used alongside with a slide hammer to remove the end plate from the rail.
The upper rail bracket is now grinded off and removed from the vehicle. The lower rail bracket is now grinded off and removed from the vehicle structure. Any remaining adhesive is cleaned off using a belt sander with a Scotch-Brite belt, so we are able to test fit our new rail end plate and brackets. Our select jigs are now installed onto our bench and attached to the rear rails. These jigs are built to OEM specifications, which confirms there is no possible remaining damage to the rear frame rail. The new floor is now test fitted on the vehicle, followed by the rear end panel. The select jigs will be removed to install the end panel, and then reinstalled afterwards. Time to install all our rear bumper retainers so we are able to test fit the new rear bumper cover. When trying to test fit the new rear bumper cover, I quickly realized the bumper hits on the select jigs. I removed the lower portion of both jigs which allows me to test fit the new rear bumper cover to the vehicle. I think it's safe to say this trunk lid doesn't fit anymore, so let's remove it and install a brand new one. With the new trunk and hinges installed, it's time to make some minor adjustments to the trunk to confirm proper alignment. This vehicle is now test fitted. Subscribe and stay tuned for the continuation video coming soon.